Today we're going to be exploring the nook and cranny of Keepa known as the offers tab. This is something I didn't take advantage of until really recently. It's hard to find, but it is a powerhouse of information. Keepa is the most critical tool that you need in order to make educated decisions when it comes to selling on Amazon. Alrighty, so we have Keepa in front of me. Um, this is just traditionally what it looks like when you go into Keepa. And what we're gonna do is follow my cursor up here to the little tab that says data, click on that, and then we're gonna click on the offers tab, which is what's already open here in front of me. And before we break it down, I just want you to know kind of what we're looking at. This is gonna be all of the sellers currently selling this product and then a bunch of information that we can extract from this little tiny section here. What really drew me to this section, first off, was to understand how much stock my competition had, right? And what I consider to be competition since I do FBA is people that also do FBA and are selling it at the price point, give or take, of where I'm gonna sell it. So if you see here where my cursor is, you're gonna see the prime icon next to these numbers these are FBA sellers, okay? Because if you're not familiar, when you do FBA, your products get listed as prime, okay? So when I see this, and they're all listed at 3740, and let's say I'm also looking to sell it for 3740, those are my three competitive sellers, and I would be the fourth. So here, if you look at my cursor, there's a stock column. This person has nine, this person has 31, this person has one. And also right next to that, you can see how many of the items they've sold approximately. This person sold 103, this person sold nine, this person sold 19. And again, I'm not even looking at the two underneath it because they're not competitive sellers. They're doing FBM, I'm not worried about them. Okay, so what does that tell me? How does that help me? By looking at the amount of stock that your competition has, it allows you to make educated decisions on how much of a product you may want to purchase, okay? So let's use this as a real life example. Person A has nine, person B has 31, and person C has one, okay? Let's use a round number. Let's say that we know this product sells 100 times a month, and we're all gonna be priced the same. It's fair to say that we would each get 25 sales a month, 100 divided by four competitive sellers, okay? Again, just trying to make this super simple. Well. If I look at this, I say, well, one person only has one piece of inventory in stock. They're not going to get their share of 25. One person only has nine. They're not going to get their share. And one person has 31. So if I knew, and this again is for example purposes, without a shadow of a doubt that it sold 100 times a month, I might be willing to buy even more than 25 of this item. Now, let's say they each had 25 on the head. I would say, okay, I'll buy 25. And let's say they all had only one piece of inventory in stock. I might say, hey, I'll even go up to 50. So it helps with determining if you should buy more or less of something based on the total amount of sales an item gets in a month. The reason it's not perfect and never perfect is because you don't know when they're gonna replenish their item. You don't know when other sellers are gonna hop on the listing. And there's factors like that that are out of your control. So I certainly wouldn't go all in just because of these numbers but it, it lets you know basically how much stock your competition currently has in live time. And as far as the amount sold goes, I like that a lot because that helps confirm and validate that in fact this product is selling quite a bit. This person here has sold the item 103 times. I tend to imagine somebody wouldn't sell an item 103 times if they weren't making money on it. I, I sure as heck would hope not, right? and this person has sold it nine times, and this person 19. It's just validating, in case you have any shadow of a doubt that a product's selling or not, it's just a little context clue to help you confirm it is a good seller, okay? And then next to that is a little stock history chart, which I really like. So looking at this top person who's been selling it the most, at this point in time, February 18th, they had eight items in stock, and then if you notice, it jumped up to 19. Okay, the fact that they replenish this item is telling me that they've sold it and that they believe in it and they're having success with it. And also watch this, it went from 19 on April 10th to now seven on May 2nd. That means it's safe to say that from April 7th, excuse me, April 8th to May 3rd, they've sold this item 
12 times, 19 and now they have seven, right? So again, if the data wasn't clear to me on Keepa or maybe there wasn't even a seller rank, now I know this person alone has sold it seven times in the last couple of weeks, all right? And same thing here. Looking at the stock, they had 14 at this point in time, then they had seven. So they sold seven of them really quickly and then they went up to 33. The fact that they replenish so many tells me that it's selling. So when you have a normal chart showing all the sales data, like this chart did, right? Which we'll go to here just to reconfirm. You know, this is what a normal sales chart looks like up top. The up and down green lines are the dips in sales rank. However, sometimes items don't have seller or sales rank information. So you have to use context clues. And I like using these charts to show me that the item is in fact selling. And keep in mind, for items that don't have clear cut uh, sales rank data, you're gonna have far less competition. All right, so that's huge to me. Then moving on here to the right, you're gonna see this column that says seller. This is just the name of all of the competition, right? They're actual like Amazon account handles. Uh, you're gonna see check marks here confirming FBA and Prime. We already went over that with the Prime logo over here to the left. And then I like looking at rating and review count. I take it with a grain of salt, but what are those telling me? It's just validating the seller, like this top person, they have 100% rating and they have 70 reviews. So good, solid numbers, that tells me they've been selling probably at least a year. The reason that's important is that I now trust their judgment on this product and it's more confirming to me it's a good product. Now if they had a 50% rating and only 10 reviews, I would say maybe this person actually doesn't know what they're doing and they could even be losing money. So if they were the only seller, I might take it with a grain of salt. So seeing that, and then another 100%, another 100%, and decent amount of reviews. One only has 12 and one, so they're relatively new. But collectively, this helps answer the question and just strengthen the decision-making process of this product if you find it at the right price, all right? And so now I wanna take you over here to the far left-hand corner, the price history. The reason I like this chart is because it shows me where this person has listed this product. So using the top person, they've sold it 103 times. Again, we've established they sell this product a lot. And this is, is validating that the price doesn't really fluctuate too much. Now again, you can find that out in regular Keepa, this is just another confirmation. Or if that data isn't relevant in an item where there's no seller or sales rank information, this can also help. So here the person had it listed for $38 and now they have it for $37.40. Basically no fluctuation, right? Same here, 38 down to 37.40. If I saw something like 38 down to 22 current day, I might say, oh wow, I should double check the amount of sellers or do further, further digging because the price has tanked. So again, it's just another little context clue to help you with all of that. I almost forgot to mention, this is also a great location if you're concerned about IP complaints because you think the brand is the only seller on the item. Well, as you saw, this lists out every single seller in this section on that item. So for instance, if you were looking up a Starbucks product and you saw the brand as the handle, Starbucks International, and they were the only seller on a good selling product, that's a major context clue that they probably kick other people off of the listing. That in itself is not necessarily always the case, but when looking at IP complaints, I certainly like to go there to see who is selling the product and if it is the brand selling the product solely. So I hope that makes it clear why I'm really gung-ho about that little data and offers tab. It helps you determine how much stock your competition has, who's selling the product, is the brand themselves selling a product, what have they done historically with the price, is this seller credible based on the reviews and their ratings and so on and so forth. And it's really, really valuable when there's no sales rank data in Keepa because now you can put together a crystal clear picture in your mind based off these context clues and other sellers are probably not gonna do the same because when they don't see sales rank data, many people just run away from it in general. And so that's it, continuing on with the Keepa series. I'm Jonathan, this is Duke Does Amazon, my Amazon selling channel, we're on Instagram as well. Questions, comments, topics, put them below. I will see you guys soon.